and Marie Taylor, and I bring you greetings from Michigan Welfare Rights, where I'm honored to serve as the state chairperson of that organization. And I want to say at the outset, uh, we're so pleased that we were included in an opportunity to address these issues relative to how to manage water and water problems. Epic changes in the relationship between working people and the world over and traditional means of survival have altered the progress of humanity permanently. Since the age of industrialization, blue collar America has only known one process of existence. You work, you earn a paycheck, you spend it on those things you need to continue to live. You run out of money, so you go back to work. This is the cycle that repeats itself. Cities like Cincinnati, Chicago, Gary, Flint, Highland Park, Pontiac, Detroit, and others have all similar histories which have been tied to these locations and industries that require mass numbers of laborers. Detroit and nearby communities built cars for the world, and that world was connected to automobile manufacturing and all of the ancillary items required to keep that industry thriving. In 1914, when Henry Ford advertised the first $5 a day opportunity for those willing to work on the assembly line, blue collar workers, especially those in unions, established a pattern for the nation to follow. Eight hour days, extra pay on weekends, holiday pay, time off of vacations, health care benefits, academic benefits, etc. Municipal, school, and most other employees duplicated contracts that mirrored employee-employer relationships and negotiations set in factories. The quality of life for millions of us have been tied to those relationships from 1914 to 1984, just over 70 years. Standard of living for working people started to change in small, imperceptible ways in the mid-1980s that was coupled with population declines forced by massive losses of high paying jobs. With the onset of high tech manufacturing methods, the die was cast and Detroit went from 1.9 million residents to just over 700,000 a day, today. With the population on the move, why keep so many schools open? Why keep hospitals open? Why keep opportunities available for people that will never find a job again? 2014, the Detroit Water Department started the most recent and egregious campaign of mass water shutoffs that targeted only low-income residential customers who were two months behind in payments or $150 in arrears. In June of that year, we started to hear rumors about something happening in a place called Flint, Michigan. Poisonings were going on, and the word started to come out. In, in, in the end of the program, both of these issues marked the genesis of the long nights of terror for blue-collar workers, a night that has not yet ended. Despite multiple levels and battles to stop these dra uh, draconian practices, residents have not been able to stop the moral bankruptcy of water shutoffs or even water poisonings. We are left to create methods of survival as the only option for Detroit, for Highland Park, for Flint, and for other cities and communities across the country who are facing shutoffs. In early 2014, the initial numbers shared with us that were being targeted for mass water shutoffs was 59,990 addresses. Since those days, Detroit has seen upwards of 100,000 disconnections. Possible solutions include these suggestions. A federally mandated opportunity to establish uniform policies on water and sewage affordability based on each residential customer's ability to pay. Uh, a federal dedicated source of funding to the drinking water state revolving fund and a renewal of the Build American Bonds program to, uh, to address aging water and sewage infrastructure issues. In the end, in Detroit especially, the only thing I can say is that I don't live in a bankrupt city. I live in a city that has been bankrupted. We need you to help us to stop water shutoffs. We need you to help us restore all water services and then determine individual eligibility. And then we need you to help create a private and a public water policy and procedure. 
In the end, I want to thank you so very much for the opportunity to share a little bit about the misery that we've been going through. And I'm going to go further. I would like it if some of you that are here today might consider assigning someone from your offices to work directly with us. Thank you so much.